Lecture 7, Food Hazards from Purchase to Serving. The aim of this lecture is to provide an understanding of the hazards, controls and monitoring throughout food storage, preparation, thawing, cooking, cooling, reheating and serving. And the learning outcomes, by the end of this module you should be able to identify how food is contaminated, when bacteria multiply and how they survive. State when toxins are formed and when spores germinate. Explain the various cooking processes. State the various temperatures required under law for cooking, reheating, chilling and freezing. Uh, this is quite a longish section. Uh, so if you want to get a, a coffee or a, a, a drink um, to keep you the side of you. But then again, it's a video you can always uh, pause as you go through. So, good hygiene practices. Uh, it is assumed that the following prerequisite programs are all in place at all relevant stages. Now, prerequisite programs uh, is part of HACCP terminology. These are things really you should have in place uh, before the main HACCP system uh, kicks in. So, we start with uh, satisfactory design and construction of premises and equipment, adequate facilities, the use of approved and reputable suppliers, effective cleaning and maintenance with maintenance contracts, good personal hygiene and training, staff controls, staff vigilance, effective supervision and competent staff, integrated pest management, contingency plans, satisfactory transportation and product information. So let's have a look at the hazards uh, from delivery to service. So with delivery and unloading, uh, we get a possibility of contamination and multiplication. Controls, make sure you use approved reputable suppliers. Make sure you give them specific delivery requirements. Chilled food must be uh, delivered under five degrees Celsius. And you must make sure the food handler uh, it is actually temperature probing the food to make sure it is that temperature. If it's above that temperature, then it must be returned. Frozen food must be delivered at minus 18 or lower. And again, check with the food handler. If it's above that temperature, then reject it. Rapid unloading, so in less than 15 minutes. Food must be protected and covered. And uh, there must be, if possible, depending on the size of your kitchen, uh, a deboxing area. Delivery unloading, check the temperature and the time. Check the vehicles and the driver. Check packaging and date code. Make sure you um, use organoleptic checks. These are physical checks. So using the senses, the sort of smell, taste, touch, etc and your site. And look at the condition of canned foods. Make sure there are no blown cans uh, where they are bulging. Make sure there's no labels missing off the cans. And again, check all dates to make sure they're within date. Storage conditions required for raw meat and meat products. These must be held at minus one to plus one degrees C. Eggs, uh, less than 20 degrees C. Uh, there is no requirement these days for eggs to be refrigerated. In fact, when you use them in the kitchen, it's far better when they're at room temperature. Meat pies, for example, should be at less than 5 degrees C, so again, refrigerated. Pasties and sausage rolls, refrigerated, less than 5. Ice cream between minus 18 and minus 12. Uh, you will find when you're trying to serve ice cream at minus 18 or lower, it is like solid concrete. So bring it up to minus 12 is okay. It's not going to hurt the food safety and it will be easier to scoop. Uh, milk, including imitation milk, less than 5 degrees C. Uh, imitation milk, if it's um, sterilized milk or the UHT milk, that, that doesn't have to be refrigerated until it's opened. Flour and cereals kept dry in a dry goods store between 10 and 15 degrees C. Canned goods, again dry. Same conditions as above. Fruit and vegetables, again, same conditions as above, 10 to 15 degrees C, uh, dry conditions. 
So ambient storage, where we keep dry goods, uh, the hazards there could be contamination and multiplication. So the controls in ambient storage, make sure you've got good stock rotation, first in, first out. Make sure it's cool and dry, clean and tidy, off the floor, away from walls, held in rodent-proof containers, there's no chemicals in the dry goods store, no incompatible goods, uh, for example, onions next to fresh fruit, uh, K with handling, separate deboxing, and suitable shelving. Preferably not wood unless it's sealed uh, by way of a gloss paint or varnish. Uh, the best shelving is probably uh, metal shelving, um, stainless steel, aluminium, whether it's a solid sheet, uh, which is easier to clean, but you can get the, uh, I think it's called the Wirax one, which looks like very thick wire, but they are difficult to keep clean. And how do we monitor? By audits and inspections. By looking at date codes, make sure nothing's out of date. The condition of the food. The condition of the packaging. The condition of the canned food. Defects of cans. What are the hazards there? Well, we could get contamination or multiplication. So defects include punctured cans, which can let bacteria in, for example. Dented cans, that could uh, affect the inside seal of the can. Um, a metal can, which is either aluminium or stainless steel, has a protective plastic coating on the inside. And if a can is dented, then this plastic coating can become fractured on the inside and release the food um, or let the food come into contact then with the metal itself. Uh, not so much a, a big problem with stainless steel but certainly with aluminium it could be especially especially if it's acidic food. Uh, a blown can is when there's a gas buildup in a can so it could be due to uh, usually due to fermentation with the release of ox uh, sorry with the release of carbon dioxide or hydrogen gas and um, that could tell you as well there's bacteria inside um, and it could well be Clostridium botulinum, uh, which pres pres prefers the, uh, the vacuous um, container because it's, uh, it's an anaerobe that prefers uh, vacuums rather than oxygen. Uh, then you've got things called flat sour, rusty, flipper, which makes a noise like a flipper can if you press it, a springer, soft swell, hard swell and a hydrogen swell. Again, further details of these you will find in the notes that are supplied with the course. So control of cans, again use an approved reputable supplier, care in handling, stock rotation. Uh, monitoring, regular audits for storage conditions, visual checks of cans. Chilled food storage, uh, again, if done incorrectly, could lead to contamination and multiplication. So controls, make sure that the fridge runs between 1 and 4 degrees C. Uh, the legal maximum in the UK under the food safety regulations is uh, 8 degrees Celsius. Uh, but that is quite a dangerous temperature as far as I'm concerned because E. coli will start to grow. Studies have shown that E. coli will grow at temperatures of 4 degrees C and above. And when E. coli grows, it will release toxin. Separation of raw and high-risk foods. Stock rotation, reject unfit food. No overloading. Keep door closed. Care with hot food. Food covered. No open cans. Uh, any cans must be... Uh, pawn into uh, food safe containers, food labelling, door seals in good repair and clean, and uh, defective, def effective defrosting, uh, preferably automatic. Monitoring, check the temperature regularly, uh, at least three times during the shift, uh, beginning, middle and end. Uh, and it's preferable to not just rely on the outside display, if there is one on the fridge, but to check the temperature of the inside of the fridge also, uh, usually in product temperature. The best way to do this is to use a cup of dried salt, 
This can be kept um, indefinitely into the t on the top shelf of the fridge. Uh, the salt is not going to go off. Uh, it might go damp after time. You might need to replace it. And what you'll do then, uh, the three times that you check the temperature of the fridge, you insert your probe into the dried salt. Uh, in effect, it's like putting your probe into a piece of meat in the fridge or um, a pie or whatever happens to be there. But it's what we call non-destructive testing because if you, ins if you insert it in actual meat or sandwiches, then you have to dispose of that product. Um, and regular audits and inspections. Check the condition of food. And obviously, date codes need to be adhered to. Um, I will go through codes later on, but the only two codes um, that's recognised by food safety legislation is best before and used by. Uh, used by is a food safety date, and best before is a food quality date. Um, just a little bit more on codes as well, so it'll sort of sink in. Uh, again, in the UK, if you use anything past this best before date, uh, it is not illegal but it doesn't show professionalism. If you use uh, items past its use by date, that is illegal and you can get prosecuted. Frozen foods could give, rise to, could give rise to contamination or multiplication. So controls include storing at minus 18 degrees C or lower. Use alarmed units, so if the temperature does increase, uh, it sets off an alarm. Uh, reject anything above minus 15 degrees C. Uh, again, this is to do with deliveries more than anything. Don't fill above the load line that uh, it tells you in the freezer. Get effective stock rotation. Uh, again, it's far better to use upright freezers than chest freezers uh, because chest freezers are easier to keep um, stock rotation going in some order. With chest freezers, everything sort of ends up at the bottom of the freezer. Uh, handle carefully. Use suitable packaging. Label with date and description. Separate raw and high-risk foods. Monitoring. Check temperature regularly using audits and inspections. Check the condition of the food. and Check the date codes. Again, food will last longer in the freezer than the fridge. Uh, you will normally find the recommendations on how long you should keep food in a freezer on the packaging that comes from the supplier. Uh, but if you're using fresh meat that's been cooked uh, yourself or uh, raw meat that you got from butcher and you're freezing it, uh, it's best not to keep it in there longer than three months. Uh, after that time, it will tend to go rancid. You will get oxygen um, entering the fat and giving it an off taste. Although you can keep it in there for as long as you like uh, from a food safety point of view, but from a food quality point of view, uh, the taste is highly affected. Hazards uh, with frozen poultry, for example, uh, contamination and multiplication. Controls always separate from high-risk foods. Refrigerate when thawed. Cook thoroughly with, within 24 hours. Clean and disinfect the work area. Eat immediately or cool rapidly. Avoid handling whenever possible. And thaw completely. Um, in, a, in a room at 10 degrees C, um, you can leave it there overnight. Uh, if it's less than, 50, sorry, less than 15 degrees C, um, you can, for example, cold water. You need to make sure the, it's, it's held in cold water overnight. Um, you've got fridges, you can use microwaves, thawing cabinet. There are many ways to defrost. Uh, probably the quickest, um, safest way is a microwave, because it does it so quick, and then you can cook it. You can defrost a whole frozen chicken within about 30 minutes. If you use a thawing cabinet, um, it's held at a temperature, um, which means that the it'll take overnight to actually defrost. A fridge actually takes forever for poultry to defrost, although that is the recommended way uh, to defrost poultry in a bottom of a fridge in a covered container. Uh, cold water is quite good, uh, but not using running water because you'll get splashes um, of Campylobacter come from the chicken, and um, some of the spray, some of the water will be aerosolized, and that could end up on walls and surfaces, etc. Stock rotation. 
<coughs> so make sure that food is fully coated. Um, you can get color coding is a good way of stock rotation, like day dots. Use by dates, always make sure you abide by those, they are food safety dates. And these you'll find on perishable foods. It's considered unfit after the date. It's an offence to contravene, as I mentioned. It's an offence to change the date. And there's been um, recent uh, undercover operations uh, with certain poultry producers um, where somebody has videotaped people actually changing the dates on poultry and the poultry being sent out to supermarkets for sale. Uh, best before, this is a food quality date. It's no offence to sell after date if it's fit. The manufacturer guarantees the quality to this date. Uh, the shelf life depends on satisfactory storage conditions. So, first in, first out, FIFO, that's what that stands for. So, if you've got a new stock coming in, that goes to the back and the old stock comes forward. So, it ensures older food is used first. It avoids spoilage, mould, slime, unfit food. It avoids wastage. It guarantees a constant quality. It maintains correct stock levels and it reduces the risk of pest infestation. Label accurately. Uh, make sure all the storage information is on the label. Make sure you, you do daily and weekly checks. Written stock control records. Hazards from food preparation include contamination and multiplication. So the controls, separation of high risk from raw foods, ensure colour coding, disposable cloths, organisation and workflow, minimise time at ambient temperature, minimise quantities prepared. And monitoring will include audits and inspections as usual, time at ambient temperature and the temperature of food. So cooking and processing, uh, we can get contamination, multiplication and survival. So controls here will include, make sure you cook food to 75 degrees C from a food safety point of view and from a food standards agency and other agencies concerns. Uh, but as I keep on banging on, from a food quality point of view, anything between 60 and 63 is fine. Uh, stir liquids regularly. So you don't get a buildup of uh, cool spots, cool areas uh, where any spores could actually germinate. Uh, care with mince and roll joints. Ensure everything is completely thawed before cooking unless it's a, a small item. Cook near to eating because the number one cause of food poisoning, uh, which I mentioned earlier uh, in the lectures, is um, producing food. Uh, well before you need it and keeping it at ambient temperature, not keeping it hot. Uh, you need to protect from contamination and care with acid food. Cooking and processing monitoring, check the times and the temperature. Use a disinfected probe thermometer, audits and inspections. So cooling, uh, you can get contamination, multiplication, and spore germination from inadequate cooling. Uh, controls here, cool rapidly where possible. Minimize the size of the joint. Make sure the maximum surface area and temperature differential uh, is high. Uh, in other words, uh, don't put a large uh, pot of food stuff, uh, whether it's a stew, um, casserole, gravy, etc., into a fridge. Tip it into shallow containers, so there's the maximum surface area and it will cool down more quickly. Uh, we've got different standards of cooling. Uh, the American standard and the Camden standard. And you will find these in the notes uh, that are supplied to the course. Um, it depends on the various temperatures that are accepted by the different standards. You need to refrigerate when cool i.e. at ambient temperature, and cover and protect food. Monitoring, check times and temperatures, audits and inspections. 
Reheating, we could get contamination, multiplication, or survival. So with the controls, we need to reheat to 75 degrees C. Um, strangely enough, it's 82 degrees C in Scotland. Um, no idea why that is, um, and nobody can give me answers to it either, because 75 degrees C is high enough. Uh, boil liquids when you're reheating. Uh, regen or regenerative ovens are recommended because uh, they use a high temperature over a short period of time. Commercial microwaves are satisfactory. Try to minimize the bulk, uh, so small portions. Only reheat once and protect from contamination. Monitored, check temperatures and times, audits and inspections, our old friend there. Hot holding, uh, we can get contamination and multiplication. So the controls, it must be held, or the food must be held above 63 degrees C. Uh, that is a legal temperature. Uh, there must be thorough prior, uh, sorry, thorough cooking prior to uh, holding it at that temperature. Uh, you need to preheat equipment, use minimum quantities, and protect from contamination. Monitoring, check temperatures and times, and, you guessed it, audits and inspections. Serving food, you know, contamination and multiplication. So we control that by serving quickly. So producing food and serving it as quickly um, to service as it has been produced, rather than keeping it hanging about. Uh, minimise time at ambient temperature. Use good stock rotation. Small quantities. Minimise handling. Uh, use separate staff or uh, different uh, processes. And avoid customer handling and protect from contamination. Monitoring again, check temperatures and times and audits and inspections. Also date codes and looking at the condition of food. So again, using our organoleptic uh, sensors. Cook chill, uh, this is where food is cooked specifically to use as a cold product. Um, so it's cooked, it's chilled, refrigerated, then kept cold. And hazards here include contamination, multiplication and survival. Nine stages of cooked chill. Uh, we have bulk storage, preparation, cooking, portioning, blast chilling, storage, distribution, regeneration and serving. And uh, at each of those stages, there must be uh, full protection of the food from outside contamination and uh, storage areas, uh, depending on the food, uh, either refrigerated, ambient or frozen. Preparation must be done as quickly as possible and use small quantities at a time. Cooking thoroughly to 75 degrees C. Portioning, again, must be done quickly. Uh, blast chillers are like fridges if you've not encountered these uh, but they do continually blast very cold air over the product and you can actually take food um, out of an oven straight into a blast chiller and they'll take it down between 1 and 4 degrees C within 90 minutes. Um, they are that efficient. Then after blast chiller and storage, either refrigerated, frozen or chilled. Then distribution using uh, clean food safety transport then the food then is regenerated um, i did say storage at frozen this is cooked chill so um, there won't be any freezers involved it'll just be storage in fridges regeneration then to above 75 degrees c and serving as quickly as possible safety rules with cooked chill use good quality materials make sure the specification is enforced at each uh, point Raw products should be stored correctly. Avoid cross-contamination at all times. Uh, there must be physical separation. Separate equipment. Separate staff. Controlled thawing. Uh, by separate is separating equipment staff uh, from raw and from cooked. Um, in other words, you will keep the staff separate. You will have staff preparing the raw food. You will have staff preparing the cooked food. 
uh, after it's been cut, uh, they will be used in their own separate equipment as well, uh, such as knives, uh, preparation boards, um, slicing machines, etc. There should be controlled thawing, high hygiene standards, good personal hygiene, staff suitably trained, commensurate with their work activities, but in my view, um, every member of staff as a food handler should be trained to um, at least level two. Temperature control, round about three degrees C. Anything between one and three, really, as long as um, in certain fridges, if we keep um, uh, vegetables or fruit or salads, um, it could freeze. Uh, but then again, with cooked chill, it normally doesn't affect salad items. We are looking at uh, cooked food. The safety rules with cooked chill, there must be a HACCP system in place. There must be date marking in use. Hygienic food containers must be used, food safe containers. Life is five days from preparation to consumer. If over 5 degrees C, consume within 12 hours. Over 10 degrees C, destroy. Regenerate quickly after storage. Benefits of cooked chill. Uh, it's more cost effective because there's less wastage. Lower staff turnover, fewer staff due to centralisation of the satellite kitchens. Uh, energy consumption is reduced because regeneration is uh, usually done in one place. Less floor space, benefits of bulk purchase, better equipment utilisation. Cook freeze uh, hazards there could be contamination, multiplication and survival. So the steps involved in cook freeze include bulk storage uh, in freezers, preparation in as quickly a time as possible, cooking, portioning, blast freezing, uh, taking to minus 5 degrees C in less than 2 hours from leaving the cooker and subsequently to minus 18 degrees C or lower. Packaging and labelling, storage for up to 12 months and regeneration. 75 degrees C or 70 degrees C for two minutes. Although well, I would ignore that second bit, uh, this must be an old slide. Um, you haven't got time to mess about holding a probe in place for two minutes. Uh, if you take it to 75 degrees C, that's an instant temperature. Uh, sous vide uh, literally means in French under vacuum. And I've been experimenting recently at home with a sous vide stick. Um, uh, what it means is you uh, wrap foods in pouches, um, then you extract the air from the pouches with a vacuum sealing machine, and these vacuum packs then are held in a water bath at a specific temperature for a specific period of, period of time. It's a method used uh, quite often in upper class restaurants, especially in Michelin style restaurants, uh, where they cook in things like steaks duck portions, uh, lamb steaks, etc. Uh, and they cook it at a temperature of between 60 and 63, although some have experimented between 56 and uh, 60 degrees C. Again, these temperatures are safe because all food safety bacteria are killed at those temperatures. And the food is cooked for uh, longer than normal, as would be in an oven, um, they're held in a water bath for between one and two hours. Um, after the food is cooked, um, the, the steak or the, the meat item will look very uh, pale and, and appetizing. Uh, so what the chef will do then, they might well finish it off with a blowtorch to actually give a colour, or they'll pan fry it on either side uh, for literally seconds to give it a bit of colour. Because all the cooking has been done and all the... Uh, juices and succulents are still inside um, the meat um, because none of the proteins are really coagulated that much to squeeze all the juices out of the meat which you will get from overcooking and especially at 75 degrees C. So the process is storage and preparation, vacuum packing, heat treated by controlled cooking in moist heat and held at low temperature over a long time, blast chilled stored at less than 3 degrees C, and reheated for service. With sous vide, food is not commercially sterile. 
So anaerobic conditions do exist after cooking. That's why uh, these pouches, if they're not used straight away, as I mentioned uh, in a restaurant, they're kept in, under refrigeration. Um, they must be kept under refrigeration uh, because if they're kept at room temperature, even with uh, the vacuous conditions in the pack, um, things like clostridia and bacillus, uh, especially clostridia, they will multiply in those vacuum conditions and that can cause problems. The safety relies with sous vide on rapid cooling, maintaining the cold chain and the integrity of the pouch. Advantages, there's an extended shelf life, less shrinkage, enhanced sensory quality, improved nutritional value. So, the key points of that section, uh, we looked at the major hazards, contamination, uh, multiplication, survival, toxins and spores. Good stock rotation is essential. It's illegal to sell or use food after it's used by date. We looked at canned defects. And again, a lot of these defects you can find in the supplied notes. Uh, chill storage of food should be between 1 and 4 degrees C, preferably less than 3 degrees C. Uh, the legal maximum is 8 degrees C. We looked at thawing of raw meat and poultry. Um, we looked at how vacuum packs uh, require refrigeration because uh, anaerobic bacteria can still survive uh, in a vacuum. Uh, cook food and reheat to 75 degrees C, uh, weirdly 82 degrees C in Scotland, and store at 63 degrees C or above if uh, you're keeping it hot for service. Cool hot food rapidly, then refrigerate it. Um, if you cool it rapidly, it's preferable to use glass chillers if possible. Uh, and temperature control after process is critical. And the cook chill, cook freeze, sous vide cook chill processes we looked at and there were various benefits uh, put forward for those processes.